Hi everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Richard Seidlitz and I'm the owner of RedPants.lol. Today I'm changing the oil on an Aston Martin DB9. This is quite a bit different than the V8 Vantage that I've shown in the other videos because it is a V12 first and foremost and also it's a wet sump oiling system. The reason this is different is because of the way it stores oil and the nice thing about it is instead of having multiple drain points underneath the engine you only have one. However, the oil filter itself is a lot more difficult to get to, which means we have to actually remove the throttle body on the left-hand side to get to it. So that's the driver's side in US cars. Um, and I'll show you that momentarily, but when you get the oil change package, which is something that I supply on redpants.lol in the store, it does include everything you need. So it does have an oil filter. This plastic baggie is Aston's own wrapping, so don't look at me for that. Um, the O-ring that I supply is necessary for the throttle body that we'll be, re we'll be removing to get to the oil filter. This is an identical O-ring to the one that we're going to be removing, however I get it from a third party so I don't call it OEM. It is identical in every way but I will not recall this an OEM O-ring because I don't get it directly from Aston Martin. Um, the last thing is that we have a drain plug and like the V8 drain plug it does have that rubber washer built in, that gasket built into it, which is why we do replace the sump and drain plugs on these cars. So the process isn't, the process isn't terribly difficult. We're going to be raising the car off the ground, which I have videos and DIYs for that. It's the same as the Vantage. Um, and then we're going to be getting under the engine to remove the drain plug, which lets all the oil out. You don't have to remove the under tray to do this, which is nice because there are about 20, and I'm not exaggerating, 20 bolts holding the under tray on the damn car. So, count ourselves lucky. Um, so aside from that, the hardest part is getting to the oil filter itself. It's a very tight space, so getting it out of there may also prove difficult, but we're about to show you how. Okay, the first thing that we want to do is to open up this oil cap. The reason is because next we're going to be draining the oil out of the system. This is going to allow us to do everything without having a bunch of oil gush out everywhere. Especially if you go for the oil filter, which is still going to have oil in it, this will help us reduce the amount that comes out of there. So all we do is we open that up, set the cap aside. This is going to allow a smooth pour of the drain flu or the oil as it drains out. Now we're underneath the car and in the second under tray, the first under tray we don't actually have to remove, the second under tray you have these two large holes on either side with the exhaust manifolds up there and in the middle of them you have the drain plug hole. So the nice thing about this is because it has this hole right here, you don't have to actually remove the under tray. So this is a 15 millimeter nut that, that or excuse me, 15 millimeter socket that's going to be needed for this. Uh, all you have to do is pop that out and the oil will flow. So in order to get this air duct out of the way, we need to remove this clamp. It's pretty easy to do, you just need a very tiny flathead screwdriver, kind of like this one. Um, and all we're going to do is put it in the end here and sort of pop it up like this. And that's it. You can see that there are these teeth on here that bite down on the end of this when we press it back together. And I'm gonna to try to do it just like this. Usually it's easy if you use like a set of pliers or something and generally put it together, but that's it. So let's go ahead and pop that back off again, like so. And now that clamp is loose and we can go ahead and work this off. All right, so it may be easiest to use that flathead screwdriver to pry this out. You can see there's this little ridge right here that the inlet duct sits in, and it can be difficult to unseal this, especially with how tight everything is. If you use this and you can gently get the tip of the screwdriver in and sort of pop it open and pry it loose and work around, just be careful not to tear this up. You just wanna be really careful because you are, you know, prying at stuff with metal. But what I'm gonna show you now is down here, you can see that this, um, comes out of here and that's not a problem you just I'm just pointing it out because you want to make sure that when we reassemble everything this hose gets reconnected so that's something to keep in mind it's just fine uh, if it does come loose but the next thing I'm going to show you is why there is such a huge demand for the catch cans that we're developing right now all this oil you can see there's oil sitting in here and actually I'm looking in here and I can see oil down there so I'm going to reach down here real quick and you can I'm, I'm actually scooping up oil so there it is nice and clean and there's oil on it again um, there's a puddle of it sitting in one of these ridges down here. So um, that is why, that is something that's a bit of a concern. 
that uh, a lot of people have expressed. That's why we're, it's one of the things we're doing with this DB9 is we're actually using it to develop our catch cans um, and do some final fitting and stuff like that. So hopefully those will be ready for us soon. But this is something I wanted to point out is this oil buildup in here. Don't be surprised if you had that. If you have this, it's very common. So now that we have this inlet removed, we are going to get rid of this throttle body. There are four eight millimeter bolts. They're a lot easier to access with a socket um, when you remove this inlet. So that's why we did that. We pulled this out of the way. And as you can see, I've loosened this. I haven't pulled them out yet because I didn't want the um, throttle body moving. But it's now, I can now access these with a socket to remove them, just like that. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these four bolts so that we can pull the throttle body out of the way. All right, next step is to get down to that filter. You can see our throttle body's out of the way. The O-ring is there. We're gonna be replacing that. That's the original one. Don't really care about it at the moment. You can get rid of that because um, we don't really need it. It'll keep it from falling out. Uh, they're pretty good at staying put though, so it's not a huge deal. But down there, we see the oil filter. I'm gonna be reaching down there with a set of these handy dandy oil filter wrenches. Um, these make life a lot easier, especially when you're reaching down there because it is really slippery on that oil filter. You can see I already grabbed it to see if uh, just how tight it was. And my hands were pretty greasy, so I kind of uh, screwed myself on that. But uh, oil filter wrenches can make life a lot easier, so this is what I'll be using to release it. So the hardest part of this job by, f by far is to get the oil filter out of the car. The, a couple of tricks that I recommend is first off, put some paper towels down underneath the oil filter itself. It's sitting right above the steering rack, so you can put some uh, paper towels on top of the steering rack. So as you pull the oil filter out, it'll be able to absorb a lot of the spilled oil. There is going to be spilled oil because it is full of oil and it's sitting in an angle. So as soon as you open up the seal, as soon as you break that seal by loosening up that oil filter, oil's gonna come out. There's nothing you can do about it. This is even after we've drained the oil from the system because of the way the oil filter is positioned. So to get the oil filter itself out, you have a lot of hoses and things in your way. You've got like these rubber hoses, you've got a metal hose, you've got a plastic hose. There's some more hoses down there you can't see at this angle, but trust me, you'll see them when you have to do this. The best way to maintain control over the filter is to actually stick your finger into the filter inside of the hole that, um, that's in the center of it. You can put your finger in there and there's a little bit of a lip on the inside that you can grab and that will allow you to pull, to basically use your finger inside and your thumb on the outside to maintain control of an oil filter. It's gonna be covered in oil, it's gonna be slippery, it's gonna be hard to maneuver. That's by far the best way to get it out that I have found. The other trick is that right here, there's an eight millimeter nut holding this hose in place, this plastic tube. I think it's plastic, I think it might be aluminum. Um, you can remove this eight millimeter nut and set it aside and you don't have to pull this all the way off. You can let it move, but this movement allows you to better pull the oil filter out of here. This is gonna be something that, even though it's only about, what, three quarters of an inch, it gives you the clearance you need to get the filter out. So that's something I highly recommend doing as well. Now we're gonna be putting our filter in the car. One of the things that you should do whenever you install any oil filter is to actually lubricate the rubber gasket that's in here. All you need is a dab of oil and you just and it's just a tiny amount. All you're doing is making it just moist enough so that when you're installing this and screwing it against that metal, it's not gonna bind up and create a wrinkle in the seal. By doing that tiny bit of lubrication and all, like I said, all you need is just a tiny amount just to make sure that there's that nice slick surface. That's gonna make sure that that rubber slides against that metal to create a perfect seal. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the oil filter in the car. Because the filter's in an angle and it's hard to see down there while you're holding an inlet tube and an oil filter and trying to spin this thing, is it's a bit difficult to get it seated. So don't worry about going quickly. Just try to be patient and make sure that as you're getting the oil filter spun onto the adapter, which is that threaded piece that's down there, um, make sure that it's going unevenly and not binding or cross-threading. If it cross-threads, everything's in trouble, you're in a lot of trouble. So make sure you don't do that. And then when you put it on, you can get to the end. Um, something that a lot of people do is they over tighten oil filters. It's really not necessary. Yeah, you wanna make sure that it's on tight enough to where it's not gonna leak. But if you have to destroy the oil filter to get it out of the car, that's a sign that you've done way too much tightening of the oil filter. I don't know if you guys have seen Tavarish's video. He did one of his V8 Vantage. He actually bought that stuff from me a long time before I even knew who the guy was. Um, he, uh, he uh, was doing an oil change on his VA Vantage and whoever had done it, the oil change prior to him, had put that 
filter on so tight that he actually broke tools and destroyed the filter trying to get it off the car. So don't go overboard. Now that we've put the filter back in place, we can reassemble everything. One of the things that we're going to be doing is replacing this O-ring. So the easy way to get this out is you can use a pick. Um, you may be able to use your fingernail. I usually use a pick or that handy dandy flathead screwdriver. So let's go ahead and pop this guy out again. Make sure you're being careful not to stab. You don't want to scratch anything. All I had to do there was poke it to pop it out. That's out of here. We're going to replace that. We're going to put our throttle body back in place with the four bolts holding it together. Um, I didn't actually disconnect the throttle body connector here, the wiring connector, so I don't have to worry about that. All I did was set it out of the way. I used a paper towel to make sure that it doesn't scratch anything, nothing gets dirty, everything's nice and clean. Once we put that on, we can reconnect this and make sure that that hose that I had pointed out down here is reconnected as well, and then refill it and we are set is now reassembled. That hose down here is reconnected. I don't know if you can see it in the video. Probably. Anytime I say you can't see it in the video, you usually can. But that hose is reconnected. That nut that we took off of the plastic hose right down here, um, or the aluminum hose rather, to get the oil filter out, make sure you do that first. Once this is all back in place, the throttle body is going to be in the way of that nut. So make sure you get that nut in there first. That's that 8 millimeter nut. You have the four eight millimeter bolts around the throttle body. You can put those back in and tighten them up. And if you have trouble with that oil, that O-ring that's inside of here, because it's easy to fall out, especially with the new ones that haven't been pushed into place, a neat trick that I learned when I was building, uh, tinkering around with uh, rotary engines is to use some Vaseline. Vaseline helps keep things in place. And it's, I think it's like what, water-based or whatever. So it just burns off. Or is it petroleum? Whatever. It's petroleum. Yeah. Um, I have seen, the whole point being that I've seen people use uh, that black instant gasket stuff and the sealant stuff because it does the same thing. It's kind of sticky. The problem with that is that it actually can create a bit of a disruption to the seal because of how thick it can be. So if you do use that stuff, be extremely careful not to use too much. You just want enough to make it tacky so that the o-ring sticks in place. So be careful if you use that black gasket stuff. That can mess things up. It also makes it a huge pain when you change everything the next time to clean all that crap out. That's why I prefer using Vaseline for that. Like I said, you only need a tiny amount, just enough to make it sticky so that it sticks into that O-ring uh, groove that's in there. Once the throttle body is back in place with those eight millimeter bolts back in, you can push this in and pinch that clamp back together. Again, make sure that everything is connected, including that hose, uh, the, the end that came out the bottom. And then we can go ahead and fill up our oil. And of course, make sure that the uh, drain plug underneath is full. You wanna, or is nice and tight. <laughs> if that's not in there, well, your oil is just gonna go out the bottom and we don't want that. Um, so it takes about 10 quarts. Make sure you check the owner's manual for your car. There is a bit of a variation. Um, there's also that whole issue with the old dipstick. Make sure you have the current one. The original one had markings that were in the wrong place, so people were not putting enough oil into their cars. So the DB9 actually had some issues with the engines popping due to oil starvation because of the dicks, the dicks. Oh my God, the dick sticks, um, the dip sticks. <laughs> Can we edit this? The dip sticks uh, saying that there was enough oil when there wasn't. Um, but we go ahead, we fill up the oil and here's about 10 quarts. Um, again, make sure you check your owner's manual for the exact amount necessary, and that's all there is to it. So, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me, rich at redpants.lol, or use the contact page of my website, redpants.lol, um, in the, I think it's the about section, there's a contact page. Most of you guys are pretty good at finding it, so, um, if anything, explore the website, see if there's anything on there that you like or that you're looking for. I'm always trying to get more of these. I'm a bit behind lately because I've had so much on my plate lately, and we've been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes to do some really cool projects. Um, um, and I finally get around to posting some DB9 material. I know it's something that a lot of people have been asking for for a very long time, so I apologize for the wait. Uh, but again, if you do need any of the supplies to do this work, please order them from Red Pants. That is what, those sales are what um, fund all these videos. As you can see, I don't monetize any of my DIY videos on YouTube. I don't try to make money off of those because I don't want to see ads on my my instructions. That's just, that's just silly. So all the videos are supported by sales from the website. So thank you to everybody that's been supporting everything that we've been doing. Thank you to my girlfriend, Claire. She's behind the camera. She, uh, like I said, my blog post, she doesn't want to be on this side of the camera, even though she's way prettier than I am, but she's been doing a tremendous amount of work to help me keep things going and to help build up red pants to be even better than it's been already. So thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.